the greatest archaeological find of, of the century. What a claim for a scholar to be made. How dare we say that the Dead Sea Scrolls are the greatest find of our times. My friends, there are five reasons. Number one, they were found in the land of Israel itself. Now, you may love America. Uh, you, you may love um, Canada. You may love France or other countries. But for Jews and Christians, there is only one holy land. This is the land where the prophets preached. This is the land where Jesus walked. And this is where the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered. Not 15 miles from Jerusalem. Number two, the Dead Sea Scrolls are so important because they are written in the very languages of Scripture. It warmed my heart tonight and this afternoon as Dr. Welty shared with us the importance of knowing the biblical languages. And I'm so pleased to hear of, of a lot of people here learning Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic. These are the languages of Scripture. If we are serious about Scripture, we, we try to get to know some of the languages of the Bible. You know, you, you may love eloquent English. You may, you may love fantastic French or sparkling Spanish. But for people who are serious about the Scriptures and the faith, we need to get back to the languages of Scripture. Here we have the real thing, not in translation, but in the very languages of Scripture. The Dead Sea Scrolls, number three, include our oldest Bible manuscripts. Tonight, in this lecture and in my next lecture, I will dazzle you by showing you the oldest manuscripts of Scripture in the world. For Jews and Christians, this is incredibly important. We are people of the book. Well, we will now see that the Dead Sea Scrolls are more than 1,200 years older than what we had before. The fourth reason the Dead Sea Scrolls are so important is they give us new information on Judaism. You know, before the scrolls, we didn't know that much about the Judaism of Jesus' day. We, we hear about the Pharisees and the, the Sadducees, um, but most of our, our sources are quite late. The New Testament gives us some information, but uh, until the scrolls were discovered, it was as if we were seeing the, 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 the picture of, the, of ancient times in, in a grainy black and white movie. Uh, we, we saw the characters and their movements. Uh, we, we saw the players in the scene. But not everything was clear. Now the Dead Sea Scrolls throw a glorious floodlight upon that ancient scene. And there in living color, we understand more about the Jews and Judaism in the time of Jesus Christ. We understand more about the Pharisees and the and the Sadducees and a mysterious group called the Essenes who lived in the desert waiting for the end of the world. And number five, the Dead Sea Scrolls give us stunning new information on early Christianity. I will not be covering too much of this tonight, but we have Dead Sea Scrolls that are very important for understanding the gospel and Christian origins. There's even a scroll that contains the very words of Jesus, a hundred years before Jesus. How's that? My friends, um, I submit to you the evidence found in the land of Israel, written in the languages of Scripture, our oldest Bible manuscripts, new information on early Judaism, new information on early Christianity. I submit to you this is the greatest find of our time. This is bigger even than the Super Bowl. Since, um, since 2003, the Dead Sea Scrolls have been exhibited in, in the museums of North America, in the States and Canada. And it's a glorious event when the Dead Sea Scrolls come to town. Uh, I've been at every one of these exhibits, and I'd like to share with you some of the excitement that we felt. My friends, uh, the way an exhibit or a museum is successful is if they get visitors. And in this case, the Dead Sea Scrolls cost them about $3 million to bring out. And so the visitors have to pay $25 to $30. So they really want to come if they're going to pay all that money. Well, why don't we have a, a hit parade? I've made a hit parade of all the museums. And there it is, Montreal, 140,000 visit visitors. 
Ottawa, 150,000, right? Canada smaller than the States. Houston, 160,000, bigger than the Titanic exhibit, bigger than King Tut. Kansas City, 2007, Mobile, Alabama. Um, I remember flying into Mobile, Alabama uh, some months before the exhibit. And they were very worried. How are we going to get a lot of people to come? And I, I looked the, 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 the director, Eleanor, in the eyes, and I said, you mark my words, you, th th this exhibit will exceed your expectations. And my friends, they had over 200,000 visitors, a record in the history of the museum. Charlotte, North Carolina, 222,000. Seattle, 222,000. Grand Rapids held the record for a long time with 260,000 visitors. And then the record was broken in 2007, San Diego, 390,000 visitors paying full price to come and see the Dead Sea Scrolls. I kid you not, I have been at events where, where, where there was a line around the block. It was like a Rolling Stones concert. <laughs> well, just one more bit of reminiscence uh, before I move on, Ot um, in Ottawa, some of you may know, they have a huge hall of civilization. It's called the Canadian Museum of Civilization. And they were terribly worried because not only do they have the, have the scrolls on exhibit, there is a lecture. And um, I remember vividly being with the director and she said, Dr. Flint, we've never been able to fill this hall of 500 people. The biggest attendance we had was Stephen Leakey, the anthropologist. Um, and he, there were about 200 people. How on earth will we fill this hall? And I, and I, I said to her, do, do not be concerned. I believe that you will have an overflow crowd. Well, uh, some weeks later, I came. My topic was Jesus and the Dead Sea Scrolls. And I was asked to speak on that. And that night, there were 600 people lined up. And she said, Dr. Flynn, what do we do? And so I said, there's only one thing to do. You better let me repeat the lecture. So I'm the one who invented the Dead Sea Scrolls double header. <laughs> we had 1,300 people at, the, at that lecture. My friends, I kid you not, the Dead Sea Scrolls are a sensation. They are amazing. And when they come to town, everything else pales in insignificance. <laughs> Thank you.